What's up YouTube? It's Coach Corey and in today's video I interviewed the number one player in the world last season crying man He's actually finished number two three times and he's been in the top ten at the end of seasons around ten times So this guy has been at the top of the ladder in Brawl Stars for a really long time And he's got some great trophy pushing tips and I'm sure he's got plenty of good advice So I wanted to interview him and share with you guys what he said now actually English isn't his first language He's not a great English speaker. So unfortunately, it's just gonna be a text interview So I asked him a bunch of questions. He responded through text and I'll tell you guys what he said He's actually from South Korea. He does live in the United States now, but he's still working on his English All right, so let's get right into it. So first question I had to ask him how and why did he start playing Brawl Stars? So he said he was playing Clash Royale for fun, and he heard that Supercell was making a new game, and he started to play it, he decided to try it out, and he loved Brawl Stars, and that's the exact same for me. I used to play Clash Royale. I played a lot of Supercell games, so they're making this one, tried it, and here I am today. Next question. Of course, I had to ask him about his name, Crying Man, a pretty interesting name. Pretty unique name. We don't really see many other Crying Mans that I know of in other games. I never really heard that name that often. But he said, there's a movie called Crying Man that attracted him to the name. Okay, I've never heard of it. He said, so most video games, he uses Crying Man as his nickname. Let me know in the comments if you guys have heard of or seen that movie. I looked it up on IMDb. I guess it's like a drama or thriller. I put a picture of it in the overlay. All right, next question. I asked, how much did he have to play to get number one in the world? I imagine it's a ton of time. He said he played about five to six hours a day to get number one in the world. That's crazy. That's a ton of time. Five to six hours a day. That was a lot of time doing one thing, no matter what it is. So a good amount of effort. Not surprising. It definitely takes a lot of time and effort just to get anywhere high trophies. And number one, obviously the highest. And then I also asked, I thought this was a pretty interesting point. Even though he got number one... He actually finished the season about 400 trophies less than his current trophy high, which seems kind of crazy. He didn't even get his trophy high, but he still got number one in the world that season. And asked, how did that end up happening? So he was aiming for 14K, 14,000 trophies. But once he hit 13K, he was feeling sort of bored with the game. And he felt there wasn't really much point in getting 14K, so he just stopped pushing. And I don't really blame him. He was like, he ended the season about 500 trophies above the second place guy. I guess it just depends season by season how much people push. Because he hadn't had number one before. So he had that trophy high of 13.6k. And I guess that's one of the seasons he got number two. And this season people just maybe didn't push as much. But still very impressive to get number one any season regardless. Alright, and the next question I had to ask him. As someone who's so good at trophy pushing... What are the easiest events to push trophies in? What did he mainly push trophies in to get number one? So he said, it's going to depend on whatever events you like. But if you're good at heist or brawl ball, that's the easiest way to push your trophies. That seems pretty interesting. I've heard brawl ball a lot because you can get really fast matches, but I don't hear heist as often. So his favorite event is smash and grab though. So he mainly pushed trophies on smash and grab. I do think that's a really great tip. Whatever you enjoy the most, you're probably going to be the best at in trophy pushing wise. It's going to be much more enjoyable. If you're having fun playing the game, you're going to play better and you want to play longer, which is definitely important for trophy pushing. It takes a lot of time to push up high. Next question. Got us the number one player. Who is his favorite brawler and why? And he said Daryl because he was the first player to get an 800 trophy Daryl. He just loves his range and damage, and also his super is really good to escape. I don't think Daryl's really fun right now. He's also really good right now. It's probably one of the reasons why he's really fun. And his super is definitely pretty crazy. Being able to bounce all over the place, it's sort of a unique super. Bull has a similar super, right? But Daryl's goes way further, and it's... I don't know if you guys saw that video on Reddit. Apparently, his super goes as fast as one of Brock's rockets, which is kind of crazy. His super is definitely one of the craziest supers in the game. Really fun. You don't always know where you're ending up. But it's a good twist on the game. And I do think he's a fun brawler to play. Alright, next question. Who is his least favorite brawler and why? And he said Piper. 
because she can only be used in Bounty, and Bounty is his least favorite event. Well, that makes sense. Personally, I don't really like Piper or Bounty that much either, so I kind of agree. She's one of my least favorite too. Next question, how much money has he spent on Brawl Stars? And he spent about $600. Good amount of money, but that's also seems pretty similar to some of the other top players I've talked to in how much they've spent. All right, now, of course, as the top player in the world last season and always and constantly at the top of the ladder, I have to ask him about some of the best brawlers in each event. Now, but I did just want him to focus on the events he plays, really. And he mostly plays Smash and Grab and Heist, so those are going to be the ones we're going to go over. So I asked him, what are the top three brawlers for Smash and Grab? And he said, Nita, Spike, and Poco. And I don't know if you guys saw Kairos Times video on the best brawlers for Smash and Grab. He interviewed a lot of pros or asked a lot of pros what they thought. And Nita Spike Poco came up the most for them as well. It totally makes sense. All really strong brawlers in Smash and Grab. He said for Nita, her reload speed is just too fast and her health is really high. Yeah, her health is basically the same. It is the same as Poco's. And obviously really fast reload. He said for Spike, he has a really good super and star power. If you know how to predict shots, he will be the best option in Smash and Grab. Personally, yeah, I agree. If I were to pick any brawler that's OP, overpowered in Smash and Grab, it would be Spike. He said for Poco, he's really easy to damage the enemies. And if you're good with him, you can heal your team every 10 seconds. 10 may be an exaggeration, but yeah, Poco, the best jump grabber in Smash and Grab. I do think he's really good as well. All right, and then for Heist, who are the top three brawlers for Heist? And he's got the old three, old reliable Colt, Crow, and Barley. I feel like they've been the top three brawlers in Heist for, I don't know, like three to four, maybe five months. They've been really good. So for Colt, he has the ability to break walls, and that is a really big advantage in Heist. Said he can give a ton of damage if you're good with him. I totally agree. If you have a really good Colt on your team, you're almost guaranteed to win the majority of your matches. Colt can carry if he's hitting his shots. Now, he doesn't carry as much as he used to because it is harder to deal as much damage, but he's still one of the best options for Heist. Said for Crow, he can use his super to get to the safe directly without breaking walls, which is a big deal, and he can also keep poisoning the enemy. Yeah, huge in Heist, especially defensively. Crow is really good. It makes it hard for the enemy to push up, just constantly poisoning them, making it hard for them to heal. They're constantly at medium or low health. It stalls them, which is a huge thing in Heist. Crow, obviously really good. For Barley, he can give a ton of damage to the safe with his super. And if you're good, you can use a Dynamite instead of Barley. I am seeing more Dynamite now in Heist instead of Barley. Obviously, Dynamite star power is the most useful in Heist. He can jump over walls, reach the safe, be kind of annoying in that sense. But yeah, and Barley got the nerf as well. That's where Dynamite's kind of replacing some. But Barley, I do agree. He's still really good. All right, some more trophy pushing tips. I said, what general tips would you give people who are trying to push their trophies as high as possible? So he said, play with good teammates. That's the most important thing. And he said, if you're trying to get above 10,000 trophies, that's really the only option because Brawl Stars is just simply a three versus three game. It's a team game. And he did say you can max every brawler on Showdown except for Piper. But Showdown is kind of corrupted like most of the players are always trying to team. So if you really want to improve your skills and get high trophies, find good teammates and play with them and push up with them. I think it's a great tip. Brawl Stars obviously a huge team game. How good your teammates are is really important in how high you can push up. So find people you enjoy playing with. Give each other feedback. Get constructive criticism going. Just have a fun time and you're going to get higher trophies. All right, next question what brawler does he think is the highest to push up so he said piper makes sense also his least favorite brawler he said just because she can only be used in bounty so if you don't have good teammates it can be a little hard to max her i agree honestly i don't like piper either but i'm also not that great with piper so maybe that's why all right i had to ask him balance change is always an important thing to me it's been a little bit since we've balance change about a month and a half so I had to ask him what balance changes would he like to see. So he wants Nita's health to be nerfed. I could see that one. Nita does have high health. She takes a while to kill. Nerf spikes reload speed a little bit. 
I agree with that one as well, kind of. I don't understand really why he got the buff to his release speed last two update, two bounce changes ago. I didn't totally understand that. I think Spike was in a good place. But Spike is mostly a smash and grab guy, even though he is useful elsewhere. And then also, buff Shelly's range. I agree with this one, for sure. I think Shelly is a little underwhelming right now. Even though she's kind of similar to Colt in that both Shelly and Colt can be used in a ton of different game modes. They're really versatile. And also, neither of them are really great in any game modes. Colt may be a little better in some other game modes than Shelly. Shelly, there's a lot of other options who can be used instead of her. Even though she is usable in a lot of different game modes, she's not really great or that particularly good in any one game mode. So I can understand you said buff Shelly's range. I think that would be a good buff for her. Maybe just... just a small range buff, and I think that would be good. It puts her more on par with Tara and with Nita, I think, as other options. Those guys can chip, do some chip damage really well. Shelly's kind of hard to get chip damage. She can get some, but it doesn't charge her super up that much, and it makes it not that useful compared to the other guys. All right, next question I said, at the top of games... How long does it take wait time wise while trying to find a match? What do you do while waiting? I've heard some of the other top players, you know, say that in the older updates, it can take five to seven minutes to find matches, but I do think they changed the matchmaking so it's not the same anymore. He said it takes about two to three minutes to find matches while playing really high trophy brawlers. So that's still kind of annoying. That's still a decent wait. But he said usually to find a match, it, he finds it within a minute. So that's okay. That's not bad. That's pretty good. And he said he usually just watches YouTube videos while he's waiting. That's a good way to pass the time. I would agree. All right. And then, of course, what additions would he like to see to the game? So he wants spectating mode. He wants replays, a new game mode, and a new map for smash and grab in Heist. And then also... A new league system, sort of like how they have in Clash Royale. You think it would be good to have that similar thing in Brawl Stars. So, personally, yeah, spectating mode, that's my number one on the list. I really, really want that. That you can have, like, esports and competitive leagues a lot easier. New map, uh, that would be good. I always think new maps are good. Keeps it fresh. I kind of feel like they're scared of doing new maps for Heist, maybe, just because they've had a lot of backlash on Heist. Probably that's the most they've had compared to their maps. Heist maps seem really hard to balance, so I doubt there'll be too many new Heist maps throughout the course of Brawl Stars, probably. A new league system, I think that'd be great. More incentive to push, more reason to play the game. That's always good. Brawls, or Clash Royale does that pretty well. Over your, like, 400 trophies, you're in a new league, and as you get higher up, you get rewards at the end of season that are actually pretty good. The rewards for Brawl Stars are kind of met, and you do get like gold reward, coin rewards every so hundred trophies or whatever. But honestly, I don't, I like, I never remember what the like trophy amount is. I mean, you can click on it and find out, but it's just not a memorable thing. It's not memorable like I feel like leagues are in Clash Royale. I feel like that's pretty memorable. And you do get the end of season reward is much better. The end of season reward in Brawl Stars is pretty like, there's no reason to really push up just for the end of season reward. It, you just sort of just get it what you get and it is what it is and that's basically it so i would totally agree new leaks this would be great our next question do you think brawl stars has the potential to be an esport and if so what format would you like to see for events so he said yes i think brawl stars has the potential to be an esport so there's already many brawl stars tournaments and it seems pretty good he said a best of five or a best of three would be a good format for events, for sure. He said, I think each game mode requires different skills. But in his opinion, smash and grab is the best mode to see your overall skill. So he wants to see smash and grab for competitive events. So I agree. Personally, I, I'm a little biased. Smash and grab is my favorite game of my favorite event. And I do think it's the most team-based event and the most skill-based event. Bounty is... Team-based and skill-based, but to me, it's more boring and it's more slow, slow paced, especially at the top games. T guys are pretty passive and bounty. I really love Smash and Grab. I think it's really exciting all the time and it's really fun to play and really skill-based. All right, next question. I think it's a little silly that I even have to ask this, but because this was a thing on Reddit, Reddit asked it and it had a weird response by Reddit. And I said, do you win trade? 
And he says, no. He Reddit asked him this as well. He had a little quick AMA on Reddit, and they asked him that. He said no, and he got downvoted to hell for some reason. I don't understand why. It made no sense. It, like, what, what are they basing this off? He said he never win trades. I don't know where this win trading cop came from, and I don't think any player who's been in the top 10 has ever win traded. Now, I, t I talk to top players all the time. I've never heard of anyone win trading or anything like that. If you guys don't know what win trading is, it's when two people purposely try and match each other at the same time and one of them purposely loses to give the other person free trophies. So this happens in some other games like Clash Royale and Clash of Clans. You'll have people who are really similar trophy level matchup and one of them loses on purpose, gives them a free game and free trophies. Now in Brawl Stars, this doesn't make sense for a couple reasons. One, those games, it's just two players doing that, so it's a lot easier to do. Brawl Stars, you need six players to agree to match up and purposely time. You have to have similar trophy levels, and you have to have three players agree to lose trophies. And it's also different. So, one, that's a lot harder to do by itself. It's also different in those games. The amount of trophies you lose if you're winning and versus losing is not a big difference. Usually, you might lose, like, say, 30 to 40 trophies if you lose, and you're going to win 20 to 30 if you win. So it's not a big difference. But in Brawl Stars, if you're at the top of ladder, you might be losing seven or eight trophies, and you're only gaining, like, three. So it's definitely different. You're, the gain is totally different for those very top guys. You might even be only getting two if you're doing your really high trophy players or brawlers. So, I don't know. I think it's pretty ridiculous. I think maybe it came from some people. There was like some quote-unquote win trading posts where people were throwing games in a brawl ball. But I think those people were just dropping trophies, which I think was a really douchey way to do it. If you're trying to drop trophies, just go in showdown and get 10th. Go run in the poison. It's even faster than dropping in brawl ball anyways. So, I don't know why people did that. That's definitely a douchey thing to do. Shouldn't happen. I don't know where this came from. Hopefully this puts it to rest. If there's anything legitimate, I would love it to come to light. I don't want any win shooting happening in Brawl Stars or really in any game. Really, I think it shouldn't happen. But I don't think it's happening as well. All right. So let's... Hopefully that's to rest. Let's go on to the next question. I had to ask him. Oh, I didn't have to. But I wanted to ask him. Does he... What does he do for fun besides Brawl Stars? So he says he just listens to music and watches movies. All right. This is pretty standard, I feel like. And then, does he play any other games? He says he enjoys playing Fortnite on PC. A lot of people are playing Fortnite. Really popular game recently. I haven't played it yet. I've watched this some. It does look pretty fun, though. All right. So, that was pretty much it. So, now, any other shout-outs that he wants to do? So, he said, if you're aiming for higher trophies, then join one of the Unity feeders. He said, I'm pretty sure it will help improve your skills. And also, he has a Twitter account. So if you want to see more about him or hear some of his tweets, follow at CryingMan underscore Brawl Stars. All right, guys, that's it for today's video. Let me know in the comments who you want me to interview next. All right, I hope you enjoyed today's video. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you later.